Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about the strong interaction. Now interactions between particles take different flavours, take different styles and they different interactions have different particles involved. They also have something called an exchange particle. Now an exchange particle is a very strange thing that comes into existence takes uh, some energy, sometimes in the form of mass, sometimes genuinely just energy, and sometimes some charge from a particle, and then travels and gives it to another particle, which then changes its charge, its energy, and sometimes its mass, and then disappears. It's a very strange concept, but these, these exchange particles are important, and each different type of interaction has its own exchange particle. So today, I said I'm going to talk about the strong interaction. The strong interaction only involves hadrons. And importantly, it's all about hadrons interacting. So I take one hadron and another hadron, they interact and something happens. The exchange particle, the particle that appears for a bit, takes some energy away, um, is either the pion or the gluon. An example of this is this. I've got a proton plus a neutron going to a proton, a neutron, and a pion. I want to prove to you that this works using conservation rules. And I'll make a note about the strangeness in a few seconds. So a proton plus a neutron going to a proton plus a neutron plus a pion. One of the first things that must be conserved in the universe is charge. So I write C here. Proton has plus one charge. Neutrons have zero charge. Proton has plus one charge. And a neutron has zero charge. And this also has zero charge. I have plus one on this side and plus one on this side. It's conserved. Now I'm going to look at the baryon number and I put a B there. A proton has plus one baryon number. A neutron has plus one baryon number. A proton also has plus one baryon number. And a neutron also has plus one baryon number. This here is a meson. It doesn't have a baryon number. So this is conserved. I'm now going to look at the leptons. I'll tell you now, none of them are leptons because it is a strong interaction. So this is all zero. Which brings me on to this last thing here, strangeness. None of these have strange quarks in them. So I can happily say that strangeness is conserved. However, if I start having kaons involved, strangeness has got to be conserved. And I'll give you an example question. I have a proton. In fact, I'm going to have an antiproton plus a kaon plus going to an unknown particle. And I'm going to call that X plus a pion plus. And the question will ask me, what is the charge, the baryon number, the lepton number, and the strangeness of particle X? Can you then work out for me what is the quark composition of particle X? So, I'm going to use this format that I did here. 
But the first thing I'm going to do is I want to know the quark composition of this kaon. It must have a quark and an antiquark, and one of them must be strange. It is up anti strange. So, looking at my charge, this is an antiproton. This has a charge of minus one. This has a charge of plus one. This has a charge of plus one. Which means this must have a charge of minus one to make both sides balanced. Baryon. This is an anti-baryon. Minus one baryon number. This is not a baryon. This is not a baryon. Which means my particle X must have a baryon number of minus one. This is a strong interaction. This is a baryon, they're all hadrons, therefore there are no leptons involved, so zero, 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 zero. Now, this is the important part, strangeness. This has no strangeness. This it does. It has an anti-strange quark. A normal strange quark has a strangeness of minus one. An anti-strange quark has a strangeness of plus one. This is a pion. This does not have a strange quark. This means this particle X, to make this work, must have plus one strangeness. So the only way this is going to work is if X has a baryon number of minus one. This means it's an anti-baryon, has a charge of minus one, and a strangeness of plus one. I have a look at my quark table. I know it is a baryon. In fact, it's an anti-baryon. So it must have three antiquarks. I know when I add these antiquarks together, they must have a charge of minus one. And I know at least one of them is going to have a strain, uh, be a strange particle in there. So I'm going to put an anti-strange in there immediately. This gives me my strangeness of plus one. This has a charge here of plus a third, because it is an anti-particle. The only way I'm going to be able to get to minus one with anti-particles is I can't use anti down because that will just turn to plus three, uh, plus one over three. I'm going to use anti up. So this will be minus two thirds E, minus two thirds E, and that equals minus one E. I have satisfied my charge, my baryon, and my strangeness with this quark composition. This is the strong interaction. It only affects hadrons. The exchange particle, this particle that appears, is either the pion or the gluon. This is an example. This is also an example. But the important thing is that strangeness must be conserved. 
And this is all to do with the fact that kaons are made in the nucleus, but don't really decay in it. So they can be made in the nucleus or in interactions in the nucleus, but outside of the nucleus, that's where they decay. And when they're outside the nucleus, they don't have anything to do with the strong force. So this is a strong interaction. In my next video, I'll be talking about the weak interaction.